What's up, everybody? You already know who it is. It's Drip Guy, Daryl, and I'm back at you guys with another banger. So, in today's video, we will be breaking down the second series that will start off the playoffs. And that series is the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Phoenix Suns. Now, I definitely think that this will be one of the most exciting series within the playoffs. And before we do get into this breakdown, I do just want to thank all the subscribers, thank all the supporters, the people who view the video, watch the video, and share the video because you guys help me, you know, stay motivated when it comes to this YouTube stuff and also just, you know, help me go harder. So I appreciate it. Y'all already know, road to a thousand subscribers. And with all that being said, let's switch over and let's get right into it. All right, so we have switched over as you guys can see and right here I do have the uh, playoffs bracket just so you guys can see it and like I was saying The matchup that we will be taking a look at is the Minnesota Timberwolves who are the number three seed versus the Phoenix Suns who are the number six seed now like I was saying before I think this will be a very interesting and competitive series and as you guys know, I do like to base my thoughts on who will win the series off of data. So with that being said, let's switch over and let's take a look at the Minnesota Timberwolves regular season schedule to see how they fared matching up against the Phoenix Suns. So we will scroll through this until we find the Phoenix Suns. So the first game with the Phoenix Suns, it looks like the Minnesota Timberwolves lost 133 to 115. So that's 0-1 against the Phoenix Suns as of now. Let's keep scrolling until we find a second matchup against the Phoenix Suns. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Let's see. Let's see. All right, so for the second game against the Phoenix Suns, it looks like they lost again, 97 to 87. And for the third and final game against the Phoenix Suns, it looks like they lost again, um, 125 to 106. So that's definitely something that you don't want to see if you are a Minnesota Timberwolves fan. They actually went 0 and 3 against this um, Phoenix Suns team. Another thing we do need to take a look at is the injuries. So let's take a look at the Minnesota Timberwolves' current injuries. So it says that Jalen Clark will be out. Um, I don't think that he will, you know, make a big difference when it comes to this um, Minnesota Timberwolves team. Let's also take a look at the Phoenix Suns injury report. It looks like Damian Lee will be out. At the start of the postseason, uh, once again, I don't think he will affect this team too much. And last but not least, let's just take a look at the stats for both teams. So, right here we got the Minnesota Timberwolves. And um, they, like I was saying, they lost their actual last game against the Phoenix Suns, which is kind of crazy. Their last game in the regular season was against the team that they're facing in the playoffs. So, that's kind of crazy, but... Uh, besides that, when it comes to points per game, they are 18th out of 30th. So, decent points per game, um, a little below the top 15. So, I'd say that their points per game isn't that great. Offense, 16th out of 30th. So, middle of the pack when it comes to the offensive rating. And, um, they really get their money on the defensive end. Um, as you guys can see, opponent's points per game is first out of 30th. So, number one when it comes to limiting the opponent's points. When it comes to the defensive rating, they're number one, first out of 30. So they have the best defense in the league. Um, let's scroll down so that we can see some additional team stats. Let me X off of this, and then I'll go through the players and what I believe will be the most important aspect when it comes to the matchups. So when it comes to the team stats, 
The things that stand out to me is the blocks and the steals. They're fifth in blocks and sixth in steals. I think the blocks really come down to Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert is a defensive juggernaut. Um, another thing that's pretty important is their three-point percentage. They shoot the three very well. It's just that they don't shoot that many, as you guys can see on 23 attempts. So if they would shoot more threes, they'd probably have a better offense in my opinion, but hey, that's neither here nor there. Let's scroll down, take a look at the players. So I think this matchup will live and die by two players, and that's Rudy Gobert and Carl Anthony Towns. Now, the reason I say Rudy Gobert is just because um, the Phoenix Suns, they have a lot of shooting, man. They have a lot of three-point threats, and if the Phoenix Suns can really take advantage of Rudy Gobert being on the floor, then they can definitely abuse Rudy Gobert by bringing him out towards the three-point line, getting him away from that basket. So that's why I think Rudy Gobert is definitely going to be a key piece in regards to this matchup. Um, Cat, I think he'll also be a key piece as well because I do think the Cat can definitely punish the Phoenix Suns because in my opinion they don't really have a great big man so Cat I definitely think if he really imposes his will he could definitely punish the Phoenix Suns uh let's talk about Anthony Edwards Anthony Edwards you just need him to um stay being decently efficient he's had a great season so far but you just want him to stay efficient uh, when it comes to the playoffs that's when defense gets tougher. So you want him to stay efficient, not try to do too much, and definitely stay attacking, get to that free throw line. As we can see, 6.4 attempts per game. So uh, that's what you want out of him. Um, Jalen, Jaden McDaniels, you want him to play good defense. And also, start back hitting his threes, man. He only shooting 33% this year, but um, I believe the prior years before he was hitting a three out of better rate uh mike conley you hope that he on edge overnight he he been having a solid year you know 44 percent from three on five attempts uh you just hope he on edge overnight he continues playing and making his um open shots and if you could get that out of him that's good that's all you really need when it comes to the um Bench players, you just want them to play great defense, man. Like I was saying, the Phoenix Suns, they're very explosive. But the thing that this Minnesota Timberwolves team has is good defenders, man. You got um, the kill Alexander Walker, a pretty good defender, long, um, things of that nature. You got Kyle Anderson. Although he moves kind of slow, he's still a pretty good defender. You got Nas Reed, who can definitely be an X factor for this team because He's one of those bigs that is a jack of all trades. He can shoot the three. He can sometimes make his own shot. And he's just very uh, multidimensional when it comes to just how he is able to score. So it should be interesting to see how Nas Reed affects the, um, you know, just affects the court and what he does when he has um, those matchups against the Phoenix Suns. Um, bench but with all that being said let's switch over to the phoenix suns and talk about them so when it comes to the phoenix suns um when it comes to points per game they are 10th out of 30 when it comes to offensive rating they are 9th out of 30 so they have a top 10 offense when it comes to opponents points per game they're 13th out of 30 so they still have a top 15 um they still have a top 15 opponents points per game, which is pretty good. And defense rating 13th out of 30. So overall, you could say that they're a pretty good team through and through. Top 15 in every stat. So that's definitely something good that you do like to see. Um, let's scroll down and let's take a look at some of their team stats. And let me X off this. All right, but let's take a look at their team stats. All right, so when it comes to team stats, they're fifth in the league when it comes to three-point percentage. So that's definitely great when it comes to three-point attempts. They're 25th. Um, one thing to note is that 
turnovers. They're 25th. So, yeah, they 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 turn over the ball a lot. And that will make or break this team, the turnovers. I'm going to tell you once again, that will make or break this team. So, those are notable things. One other thing is blocks. They're actually sixth when it comes to blocks. So, that's pretty good. But... Other than that, um, I think those are the main things that stand out. Six when it comes to uh, free throw attempts, that's also pretty good. And let's take a look at the players, man. Let's take a look at the players. So, this team is stacked offensively, man. You got plenty of players that can make their own shot. You got Kevin Durant. He 35 years old, so he's getting up there in age. But regardless, he's still been having an amazing year. Shooting, uh, he has 27 points per game, 41% from three on five attempts, and his field goal percentage is 52%. So he's been having an amazing year. Devin Booker, he's shooting pretty much 50% from the field at 36% from three on six attempts, having a pretty good year as well at 27.1 points per game. So Kevin Durant and Devin Booker both contributing to this team offensively. Um, one thing to notice is just the passing that uh, Devin Booker has been doing, man. Seven assists on 2.6 turnovers. So that's definitely not bad at all. Um, Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen has been a pretty good role player, man. Um, ironically, he's been playing decent defense. And when he's open, he could definitely hit that three. 46% on six attempts, which is amazing. So, shout out to him, man. He's been having a pretty good year. Bradley Bill, he hasn't been available as much this year. Been injured a lot. But, hey, he's still been having an okay season. 51% uh, field goal, which is great. 43% from three, which is great on four attempts. And overall, he's been having a solid season. Five assists on 2.5 turnovers. And like I was saying, the turnovers can make or break this team. And it really can. It really can. Um, also, let's talk about their bench, man. Overall, they kind of got a solid bench, man. You got Yusuf Nurkic. Um, Yusuf Nurkic is a pretty solid big man. He's a little slower in this day and age. But overall, he's still a solid big man. I wonder how the matchup between Nurkic and um, Gobert will play out. It should be very interesting because Yusuf Nurkic, he has been killing it on the rebounds, 11 rebounds per game. So it should be interesting to see how that matchup plays out. And one thing to notice, although he doesn't shoot that many, he can space the floor. I know it's only 24%, but hey, you never know in the playoffs. Role players tend to get hot sometimes, so you never know. Um, Keita Bates, Diop, pretty serviceable um, wing. Now, I know his stats doesn't really jump off, but he does play solid defense, so that's something to note. Josh Okoge, of course, we know that he's a dog. He plays solid defense. Um, his three-point percentage isn't that great. Royce O'Neal, once again, another dog, plays solid defense. Been having a solid year shooting 37% uh, from three on five attempts. And with all that being said, who do I think will win this series? That's a good question. It's a hard question. Like I said, I think this may be the most evenly matched um, teams. And in my opinion, I got the Phoenix Suns winning. They don't beat the Minnesota Timberwolves throughout the regular season. And I do think that them being the more um, balanced team overall offensively and defensively will get them a dub but with all that being said if you enjoyed the video you already know what to do like the video comment on the video subscribe to the motherfucking channel turn on notifications and all that good stuff and i'm out peace